This is the continuation of the video on investigation to reasoning to equivalent expressions. We're going to jump in and start on number three. The directions read this. Sometimes you need to combine expanding factoring and rearrangement of terms in a quadratic expression in order to produce a similar, simpler form that gives useful information. For example, the following work shows how to write a complex expression in simpler expanded and factored forms. So we're going to start by completing the example that they have in the book, and then we'll go on to A, B, C, and D for number three. So we're going to multiply 5x times 6x. Then we're going to multiply the 5x times the negative 8. And then after that, we need to deal with this part. We need to distribute the 4x to the 2 and to the negative 3x. So we write 4x multiplied by 2, and then 4x multiplied by a negative 3x. After that, we just simplify. 5x times 6x gives us 30x squared. 5x times a negative 8 gives us negative 40x. 4x times 2 is 8x. And 4 times a negative 3 is negative 12. x times x is x squared when you use your exponent rules. At this point, we can combine like terms. So we have 30x squared, negative 12x squared, and we get a positive 18x squared left over because we had more positives than we had negatives. And then we can combine negative 40x and 8x, and we get negative 32x. And then you'll see in the book that this is one form or one way that you can write it, 18x squared minus 32x. You call this the expanded form when you use the distributive property to multiply through. So we call that expanded form. Then factored form is when you take out a common factor. So in this case, we can use a common factor of 2x. So if you look at 18x squared, that's really equal to 2 times 9 times x squared. And then 32x is equal to 2 times 16 times x. So 9 and 16 have nothing in common. 9 is 3 times 3, 16 is 4 times 4. So the only thing that we have in common here is 1x and 1, 2. So we're going to pull out 2x, and we need to think about what we multiply 2x by to get 18x squared. And we will multiply 2x by 9x. So I go ahead and put 9x up here in the problem. And 2x we multiply by some value to get negative 32x. So 2x times negative 16 will give us negative 32x. So this is the factored form. This was the expanded form. And we're going to check the factored form to make sure we get back to the expanded form. 2x times 9x is equal to 18x squared. 2x multiplied by negative 16 gives you negative 32x. So we did that correctly. And that kind of shows you what we're going to do on the next A through D on number 3. So let's start by multiplying the negative 7x to each piece within the parentheses. You need to keep in mind that you multiply everything that's outside the parentheses. So the 7, the x, and the negative symbol by what's on the inside. The negative symbol is what people forget about. So we multiply negative 7x by 4, and then we multiply negative 7x by x. And then everything at the beginning, we can just copy it down. 14x squared plus 3x, and then we add on this whole section down here. I add because I already use the negative symbol to multiply by the 4 and by the x. Now we're ready to simplify. I copy down 14x squared plus 3x, and then I multiply negative 7 times 4, I get negative 28x. And then I multiply the negative 7x times x, and we get negative 7x squared. 
The next step is to combine like terms. So negative 7x squared and 14x squared give us 7x squared. And then 3x and negative 28x are like terms. So we get negative 25x. At this point, we can pull out a common factor. So in this case, if you complete the prime factorization of 7x squared, it would be 7 times x times x. And then of 25 x it would be 5 times 5 multiplied by x and you'll see what they have in common is one x factor so we pull out the x and then we think about x multiplied by what is going to give us 7x squared and that would be 7x then we write out x multiplied by some value needs to equal negative 25x so we would put in negative 25, and that would give us negative 25x. So I subtract 25. And we just wrote this in factored form. Factored form is when you pull out a factor. Up here, we call this expanded form. So let's check our work. x multiplied by 7x, does that give us 7x squared? It does x times negative 25, does that give us negative 25x? And it certainly does. So we're ready to go on to the next problem. Letter B. Once again, we use the distributive property. So I take 4x and I multiply it by 9, and then I multiply it by negative 2x. So I get negative x. 4x multiplied by 9 is equal to 36x. 4x times the negative 2x gives us negative 8x squared. And then you tack on the 3x squared at the end. At this point, we're ready to collect like terms. Again, like terms are the terms that have the same variables with the same exponents. So we have a set of like terms here. Negative 8 and a positive 3 give us negative 5x squared. And then we can combine negative x and 36x, we get 35x. In this case, we have more than one factor that the two terms share. When I complete the prime factorization of 35x, it looks like this. And then for 5x, it would be 5, 5x squared would be 5 times x times x. In common, they share an x factor, and then they also share a factor of 5. So I'm going to pull out 5x. 5x multiplied by what will give us 35x? And that number is 7, so I place 7 up above. And then 5x multiplied by what gives us negative 5x squared is the next part and that's a negative x. So negative x times 5x will give us negative 5x squared. So I subtract x because this was a negative, and we just wrote this in factored form. And let's check our work to see if we can get back to this expanded form. This is expanded form. So 5x times 7 gives us 35x. That's correct. And then 5x times negative x gives us negative 5x squared. So we did that properly. Let's look at example C. We use the distributive property first. 5x multiplied by 2x, we get 10x squared. 5x multiplied by negative 1 is negative 5x. We tack on the rest of the problem. We are now ready to combine like terms. 10x squared and 4x squared give us 14x squared. Negative 5x and negative 2x give us negative 7x. And now let's complete the prime factorization of each. 14x squared is equivalent to 7 times 2 times x times x. And 7x is just 7 multiplied by x. 
and you'll see that the factors that they share in common are x and 7. So I'm going to write 7x as the factor that we're pulling out. 7x multiplied by what will give you 14x squared? And then 7x multiplied by what will give you negative 7x? 7x times 2x multiplied by 2x will give you 14x squared. 7x multiplied by a negative 1 will give you negative 7x. So we fill that in, 2x minus 1. We just wrote this in factored form because we pulled out a factor. And then we're going to take it back to the expanded form. 7x times 2x, that will give us 14x squared. And then 7x multiplied by negative 1 will give us negative 7x. So we completed that properly. Number 3d, so it's getting more and more complicated. So I'm going to copy down 5x squared minus 4. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the negative 3 and multiply it by 4x and get negative 12x. Then I'm going to take the negative 3 and multiply it by 8x squared and you get negative 24x squared. And then we tack on the negative 25x at the end. Now we're ready to collect like terms. 5x squared, negative 24x squared gives us negative 19x squared. From here, we combine negative 25x and negative 12x, and we get negative 37x. And then at the very end, we have negative 4, write that in blue so it is set apart. And in this case, in number 3D, there's nothing else you can do with this right now because you don't know how to factor it in this form when you have three terms, when you have a trinomial. So we just leave it like that, negative 19x squared minus 37x minus 4. And this would be considered expanded form. All right, we're going to start on 4a, and we'll just see how far we can get before our time is up on the video. In this case, we have a more complicated version of distribution. Instead of just having 5 times x plus 4 and taking the 5 to the x and the 5 to the 6, now what happens is everything over here needs to be multiplied by everything over here. So we do this in the same way every single time so that you get used to making sure that you've multiplied everything over here by everything over here. So the system that people use is called FOIL. And FOIL stands for first, outer, inner, and last. And this just helps you to make sure that you covered all your bases. You multiplied everything on one side by everything on the other side. So let's go ahead and start this. We call this first because both of these are the first term inside their parentheses. So x multiplied by x. Then we add to that um, the outer. So the outer we would consider x and 6 because it's the outer part of this whole problem. So x times 6 is 6x. After that, we multiply the inner 5x or 5 times x, and we get 5x. So it's the inside. See, this is the inside. And then we have the last two terms. So when you look at it, it's the last part of both parentheses, or the second part of both parentheses. So 5 times 6, we get 30. From here, we can simplify x times x is x squared. 6x plus 5x gives us 11x. And then we add on to that 30. So we get x squared plus 11x plus 30. And I'm going to leave the rest of 4 for the next video.